But take a look at this. The defense in the Senzomiwa murder trial has poked holes in Zandile Kumalo's testimony, questioning her insistence that she saw accused number two, Bongani Ndanzi, clearly during the incident. Kumalo is, however, standing by her version of events on the fateful night. For how long did you observe the facial characteristics of both accused and in particular, I mean, sorry, both suspects, and in particular, the second suspect? How long did you take in that busyness to observe the facial features of the second suspect? Firstly, the kitchen uh, light is very bright. You can even see a fly passing. Uh, and I uh, saw so I choose uh, sorry suspect number two and I looked at him. I first saw him in the passage and when I took the crutch I wanted to hit him in the face. Elton Hart is a legal expert and he joins us now to go through what we have heard and witnessed throughout the course of the day today from the courts. Elton, thank you very much for your time. So the defense for accused number one and number two says, well, he's going to point out some inconsistencies in Zandile Kumalo's testimony. Have you noted any that stand out for you? At this point in time, there's not a significant difference, and I'm speaking on the backdrop now of what she testified in the previous trial that was declared a nullity. You can see that there is still, she's sort of half consistent on the evidence. There was slight um, um, amendments to her evidence in that where she stood, how she stood, what she saw. So she's giving us now in the second time a little bit more from what she observed uh, compared to her first uh, set of evidence in the previous trial that was uh, before Judge Maumela. But we will, it will only unravel if we get all the defense attorneys to start now cross-examining her. Then you will now start to see if there is consistencies and inconsistencies that the court should take note of. But at this time, it's still early. Um, I don't think she's more than um, three hours under cross-examination. So we'll still wait and see when we get to accused number three, four, and five um, representatives. Uh, maybe they, you'll clearly see if there's crack showing or if she is a credible witness. But I can already see small little amendments that might add up to become significant at a later stage in this trial. It is said that everybody has their own style, including lawyers. Is it clear to you where Advocate Sipo Ramosibidi is going with his cross-examination? Obviously, um, Advocate Sipo is like, he's got the difficult job because he has to first sort of half dismantle the evidence. The advocates that are going to follow him, they will have sort of half a dismantled building. So for me, it's important now he has to lay the groundwork and obviously he needs to make sure that he lays the ground and brings in all the ev 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 evidence that, was, that is and will be used and also the um, statements that was used. He need to lay them down bare so that the witness can testify and the others can work. So he's got, um, it's not clear as to what, but I can clearly see that he wants to demonstrate that Zandi Lekomalo, what she's testifying, is not really what she observed on the night of that faithful event. What does that mean? It means that um, she sort of half adapted her version in line to say that the people that's currently before court is the real accused person. So that she must make now sure that somebody can be tied. Because she even testified to say, on a previous occasion, she never said, she said the light is so bright, you can even see a fly. So she wants to put it out of doubt to say that i have 100% sure accused number two is the person that I saw. So, and he's trying to make sure that, to say, but... Um, there's a possibility, and if there's doubt, then it should be in favor of the uh, accused persons. So he's trying to create that doubt in the mind of the judge. Mm -hmm. Creating that doubt, would it include him pressing her on the specific features? Because she was able to do that with the first um, suspect in terms of describing specific features. But here she says, well, I remember his entire face. I remember his stature. I remember his height. Yes, indeed. So he has to come, and obviously I could hear also when he was crossing there, he was going to the sketch artist and he was working at that. So he's trying to show that maybe, and maybe, in, only if she, he can prove that maybe she could have made an error, then there's doubt. Because if there's a possibility that there's an error, then there's doubt, then you can't 
with absolute certainty say the person that was described as a sketch artist, the person that she described and the features that she remember is that of accused too. And I think that's what he's trying to play at to make sure that uh, he tries and creep in and brings in that um, area of doubt. And once that area of doubt, that seed of doubt is planted, then you can work with the criminal trials. You have to prove, prove beyond reasonable doubt that the person before court is the right person that committed the crime. So I think he's, but he's got a tough task. And she's short of, at this point in time, she's still sticking to her guns. That's why I say we'll get more to tomorrow and maybe Monday. We'll get a clear picture of if the court will make a credibility finding against or for her. Judge Ratam Mkhwatleng seems to have endeared himself in the court of public opinion. What has been your assessment? No, for me, he looks like he's, he's, he's firm, he's stern, and he wants to get to the bottom of things. But also sometimes I pick up that it might seem that he's also sort of half, um, a little bit harsh on the defense attorneys, and he's sort of half giving the prosecution a little bit sort of the a lighter end of the deal. Like they make sort of small little mistakes, and he's not so harsh on them. But I can see he's firm, mm -hmm. but I would just want him to do it both sides for the defense and prosecution that he treats them equally to say if you don't do something, then all of us is going to be treated down this passage. But um, we'll see how the trial, it's still early days, it's like two days in, so we'll still see. Absolutely. Elton Hart, thank you very much for your time this afternoon.